Okay, thank you very much, Wilfred. Okay, um, the first thing I'd like to do is to uh, thank the organizers of the meeting uh, most sincerely. Uh, three years ago, we had a great meeting on MFG at EPAM, and I'm very happy to uh, uh, participate in the uh, follow-up meeting. Uh, well, the in fact, uh, and the third uh, workshop of this uh, current session. So my title today is uh, uh, Graph on Mean Field Games and the GMFG Equations and Dynamical Equilibrium Theory for Large Populations on Large Networks. And this is uh, a, a collaborative work in virtually everything I'm going to talk about. So uh, if we look at this uh, uh, portrayal of, uh, trans of air transportation links, um, this is from 2016, uh, with the connections between uh, airports in Europe, North America, and Asia. Um, one thing that strikes us about this uh, large network is that the connections are non-uniform and that there are relatively dense population clusters. Now, so this is a really a very large scale network and it, as we know recently, has been almost uh, closed down because of the current uh, pandemic. Now, uh, <clears throat> the motivation for a graphon theory of systems and, uh, 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 and mean field games is because uh, due to the fact that a lot of the large population games uh, and indeed control, but we won't be ad addressing control today, is conducted over networks. Uh, now, in the uh, contemporary design environment um, and in nature, uh, networks are ubiquitous. Uh, moreover, artificial networks are growing in size and complexity. Now, uh, in this uh, rather commercial uh, set of images, we've got here a road network, electrical grid, uh, a computer board, the human brain, uh, uh, the not non-artificial element on this list, uh, and cell phone network uh, and uh, social networks and so on. And indeed, we see that these are uh, complex and non-uniform. Now, uh, for the standard mean field game model, states, costs, vector fields, disturbances, and so on, are simply averaged when, as a mass, they play a role in the behavior of a large population system, literally 1 over n summation. Uh, this is equivalent to an implicit assumption that the individual agents are distributed over the nodes of a very large scale network, which sometimes we'll use the abbreviation VLSN, which is completely connected, an edge for each node pair, and all edges have equal weight, which we'll refer to as uniformity. However, this assumption often does not hold. None of the network's uh, network examples depicted earlier, and there they are again, uh, satisfy the, the, this assumption, or pair of assumptions globally, but some do approximately locally. So standard mean field game theory is often applicable in large networks locally, cluster by cluster, uh, but is not necessarily valid globally. Now, of course, local mean will not mean physical distance because, of course, the, the connections are, are involved, like the one that we're using now. So uh, the focus of our research interest um, is going to be uh, is games conducted over complex networks characterized by, uh, complexity is often a rather amorphous word, uh, a large number of nodes, millions, billions, and so on, certainly which would involve intractability um, in uh, simple uh, analysis, which of course is one of the motivations for the use of mean field game theory at all. Uh, complex connections, uh, typically non-uniform and locally asymptotically dense. Now, the density assumption is adopted in our uh, research as described in the, uh, today's talk. Um, and it's <clears throat> so it's uh, adopted for our current research, um, but most natural and artificial systems, it must be conceded, are sparse. And so there's a, uh, uh, this is just a unfortunate fact or a fact that, um, that we uh, cannot actually at present fully address, although we intend to do so. Uh, and also a feature of the networks that we're interested in is that they're intrinsically capable of growth in size. Uh, 
Okay. Um, there's the tractability issue here, which is that many complex networks, which might seem to be intractable for analysis given our uh, current state of uh, computation, might be uh, uh, capable of analysis with some advances, which of course continue uh, that are uh, with with future computing devices this of course uh, Moore's law and so on however uh, this game of catch up can't it cannot go on forever and so this is why we're interested in uh, an analysis which is capable of dealing with unbounded growth so uh, the recent mathematically uh, developed a uh, theory of graphons provides a methodology for analyzing arbitrarily complex networks. Uh, so the locally dense theory is well established, and as I, uh, the locally sparse theory is in development both theoretically and in terms of applications. And we're very optimistic in that uh, direction. But as I say, we're going to be speaking about dense graphs today. Now, the what we we'll do in, in this uh, talk is we'll uh, give a brief introduction to the notion of graphons. Then we will um, uh, briefly uh, review MFG theory, and then uh, we'll run these together and uh, introduce graphon, graphon mean field gains. So the, the, the basic idea is extremely simple, although the theory is very sophisticated in the end. Uh, if we consider a graph with four with um, four nodes and just four edges, and if we take an indexing of the nodes, then we have the uh, adjacency matrix, which is displayed there. If we then are um, taking a one over n division of the edges of the unit square, construct a pixel picture with uh, uh, a black entry for a connection, which here is not weighted, is either exists or it doesn't. Then we have a one uh, corresponds to a black square and a, uh, and a zero will map to a white pixel, a blank pixel. So what we see here is we've got the graph object, we have the adjacency matrix, and we have the pixel picture. Uh, and this is for uh, n equals four, evidently, uh, um, where the square elements have got sides of length one over four. Now, this process can be uh, continued in the following way, which we illustrate here with the uniform attachment graph sequence. So with the, <clears throat> for, to con the uh, uniform attachment graph, which is uh, uh, understood to be a sequence of graphs which are growing in complexity, at each cycle where, you've, uh, where there are n minus one nodes <clears throat> uh, in the graph, uh, then a new node is introduced at the nth uh, cycle, and it's attached with probability one over n to each of the old n minus one nodes. Uh, uh, so then a, a, a dice with n faces is thrown, and if it comes up, uh, the single mark side comes up, then you put in a connection to the uh, uh, old node that you're considering, otherwise you don't. And for all the old unattached pairs, uh, uh, then uh, a, a, they are uh, attached with a probability one over n. Now, what you see that this does is that old nodes get more connections than new nodes, so that the graph fills in. So uh, the picture fills in. So as you see, we're moving along this sequence. This image, I should say, is taken from the uh, 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 impressive monograph of Laszlo Lovish, who's uh, the architect uh, of the theory of uh, graphons. So here we see a sequence of these increasing complexity pixel pictures corresponding to the uniform attachment sequence. And then uh, a limit image is uh, uh, portrayed here, uh, which will be, in a sense, we'll make clear uh, soon, is the uh, limiting graphon. So what exactly is a graphon? So <clears throat> it, it's simply a bounded symmetric Lebesgue measurable function uh, uh, from the unit square to the unit interval in the case of positive weightings only. So, <clears throat> so we in interpret a, an arbitrary bounded symmetric Lebesgue measurable function uh, 
are from the unit square to the unit interval uh, to be the uh, 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 infinite weighted graph, so the, the infinite weighted adjacency matrix for the uh, infinite limit for, for an infinite graph. And we'll explain the limiting procedure in a second. So uh, now there are other possibilities. You can take weights falling in any uh, interval, so uh, any bounded interval in the real line. So that'll be denoted by a WI for the interval uh, of, of interest. Now, um, here just uh, to get the people's intuition working, um, again, he here actually we have a different procedure which gets to the same uh, functional limit. Uh, where the, the intensity here, the grayscale, is described by the function 1 minus max xy, with xy being, of course, uh, x running on one edge, y running on the other, where this is generated by taking actually the limit function. <clears throat> and then for n, we then, uh, for finite n, we then uh, uh, select um, n ordinates along here. Um, and here, then, by uh, sampling, sampling for n points and taking the taking the uh, 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 values that we find for u x y by sampling n points, then we create the, the the weights between. So for the i j here, we get a weight alpha, <clears throat> and then that alpha is then uh, filled in between the between the uh, alpha and beta nodes here. So uh, the, here we get the, um, the corresponding step function for that uh, method of producing the weighted, uh, the weighted edges. And here we have, and then in fact, we retrieve the graph on limit um, as n goes to infinity. This, it must be noted, is a different procedure from the, uh, from the uh, uniform attachment graph uh, uh, iteration, uh, but the point is that you end up with the same analytic object. Now, the, um, uh, that uh, uh, it's possible uh, to put a norm on graphons by, uh, with the following definition, which actually uh, is a uh, analytic generalization of a standard combinatoric notion uh, uh, for in, uh, in graph theory which is that the, that the norm, the cut norm on a graphon, will be given by this supremization uh, over the uh, measurable subsets of the uh, unit interval on the x and y axis, uh, 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 given by the uh, modulus of the integral that you see here. The cut metric is then defined as First, you'll take the difference of a W and a V, where the W and Vs are graphons. And then to make this well defined, you then infimize over all one-to-one -one measurable mappings of the unit interval to itself. <coughs> the D2 metric uh, is, can be defined uh, similarly, um, where the integral here will be the familiar L2 metric. Now, this the, the, uh, cut, the, the cut metric is uh, it's somewhat difficult to work with, um, but what's often of great utility is that, that uh, the stronger topology of L2 is such that if we have, uh, <coughs> because of the norm dominance here, if we have convergence in L2, we have convergence in the cut norm, uh, in the cut metric, and under stronger uh, uh, conditions, we have the converse property. Now here, the central result, uh, uh, the foundational result of the subject, which is um, uh, due to Lavash and Segedi, um, <clears throat> and is uh, presented indeed in the monograph that I've just referred to, is that graphon spaces, uh, uh, in this case I, so we're dealing with the general class that I mentioned earlier, the graphon spe uh, spaces are compact. So this has the remarkable consequence that if one has a that if one has an infinite sequence possibly uh, uh, monotonically growing uh, like the uniform attachment sequence or simply a uh, random sequence with an increasing number of nodes, then there will be subsequential limits in the sense of the cut norm uh, and subject to conditions, there can be unique limits.
So this, this has the uh, uh, consequence that, uh, that very large scale networks, which typically introduce intractability, when one wants to do anything with them, for instance, if you want to carry out control theory, um, control analysis, which uh, this will be my limited remarks about this, but um, it's in, in work with uh, 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 Shang, uh, <coughs> Gao, um, that, um, that you can actually pass to the infinite limit of a sequence of networks and then carry out analysis there and then some, in some sense return to the finite object that you were uh, considering in the first place. Now, the analogy here with the mean field game, uh, with the mean field game of philosophy, methodology of uh, taking, when one's got a large a very complex problem, large population, and you pass to the infinite limit in some sense, carry out the analysis there, and then return to the finite world, uh, is clear that that is something which um, it, one is uh, incited to do with graphon theory, using graphon theory as well. Now, uh, we're not the first people to consider doing um, mean field games. Um, doing uh, games of some sort on net on networks, but work uh, on graphs. I use the word gr graphs and networks interchangeably. We can um, restrict the word graphs for the just the underlying geometric structures um, if that's necessary. So um, previous related work. <coughs> um, uh, is uh, presented in this list. I'm sure there is uh, uh, other material, but we'll. Th this is the. These are the key items. Um, I'm sure there exists other material which we don't know about. Is what I should say. Um, so, in fact, the the germ of the idea can be seen in the paper with Minyi and Roland, uh, Minyi Huang, Roland Malame, um, back in uh, 2010, where um, where the cost interactions were. Um, uh, were non-uniform, and we carried out a mean field game analysis in that case. And so that's presented in the, uh, published in the IEEE transactions on automatic control. Um, but the notion of graphons uh, wasn't uh, available uh, at that time, and that work didn't uh, proceed further. Um, uh, Olivier Gaon um, uh, uh, carried, uh, presented existence and uniqueness results for mean field games uh, for congestion effects on graphs, but this is effectively this is different but related. Uh, the, that uh, Francois de la Rue, um, this, this is genuinely the closest uh, work um, before the notion of graphons were introduced, um, did an analysis of mean field games on um, Edo Chirenye graphs and uh, the techniques he used there um, uh, insp inspired and were uh, a model uh, for analysis, which we'll describe later. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, then um, Francesca Parisi and um, Asu Otslaga uh, have did a, an analysis of uh, static games on graphons. And uh, this is an archive. Uh, uh, an archive reference, and also that was presented um, at the um, at the uh, Hong Kong MTNS a um, couple of years ago. Then um, uh, Rene Carmona, Cooney, Graves, and uh, Laurier have carried out again a static analysis of games on graphons, uh, and uh, coming to dynamics, uh, we just recently received a, a preprint from a group in uh, Michigan, where the same dynamical model is used, slightly uh, more general, in fact, um, uh, but the, the, there's no um, uh, game analysis, no Nash equilibria, but the notion, the dynamical notion that we're using has, uh, has also uh, has appeared there. Um, the work of uh, Minnie Huang and myself on Graphon mean field games was originally presented at uh, the CD, Conference on Decision and Control, in 2018 and 2019. So, uh, the, this, so the basic formulation for nonlinear mean field games um, will be a generalization, a very direct generalization, of the standard mean field game setup, 
and which uh, everybody in this audience is uh, uh, very familiar with, um, so that we've got, uh, but, uh, um, it, as a brief review, we've got um, a population of N agents, states XI in RN, controls, uh, for the super N is for N population, of course, controls taking values in RM, where the dynamics of each minor agent now is averaged, flat one over an average, um, over all the other agent states. So we have the dynamics averaged over the other states and the uh, noise intensity. Uh, but of course, this is the sample for the ith agent uh, only. I say, of course, I mean, th this is the nature of the MFG model. Um, the performance function um, will be for the ith agent, the expectation of the integral of the average of the uh, population weight, the, the uh, population uh, weighted, if you wish, uh, cost rate functions. So that uh, here we have for the single agent XIN, we have the cost weight L as influenced by the Jth agent averaged over the whole population. And uh, just, for the, just for the fun of it, uh, I mentioned here that uh, here's a major agent. Um, it's a uh, one and only uh, appearance in this talk, um, which uh, is we know that if there's a major agent, this would have a non-negligible influence here and in the dynamics if it appeared there. Um, and then the mean fields would no longer be deterministic functions of time. And that gives me the opportunity to stress that, uh, that the mean field of the system is deterministic. Um, now, the, um, as in uh, Sebastian's, uh, uh, Sebastian Jaimungle's talk yesterday afternoon, uh, where he emphasized the uh, information patterns, and that are used in MFG, <clears throat> they can, uh, that the, uh, the information that's available to the, uh, the ith agent, <coughs> excuse me, is purely uh, the, ith, uh, the ith agent's observations on its own state history, <coughs> excuse me again, uh, which is the only history that it's uh, 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 allowed to observe. Formally, um, AI's set um, of control inputs UI will consist of uh, feedback controls, uh, UIT taking values in uh, taking values in a compact set U um, as a subset of RM, and the controls will be adapted to as uh, the sample paths of the ith agent as displayed here. So this is the uh, a formal description of the information uh, set up for the, uh, for the ith agent. And um, now the underlying sample space will be a complete filtered probability space generated by the distribution of the initial conditions <clears throat> and, the, um, and uh, all of the agents, Brownian motion system uh, disturbances. So then, uh, as we are familiar with, um, Assuming that the limits exist, the dynamics of the generic agent will be given by the mckean vlasov equations, where the, where the dynamics, uh, dynamic term, the drift term, it will be given by the integration of the dynamical function fx u, where the averaging that we saw, finite averaging here, is then replaced by integration against the measure of the population when that exists. So then a solution to the mckean vlasov equations will be uh, <clears throat> the, tra the trajectory of any uh, uh, generic agent and the measure are uh, governing that family of trajectories. So now the mu t, which of course later will be the mean field, will be the measure the probability distribution at t uh, of the state of a generic member of the infinite limit population. And, and so we see that, uh, that this forms a Markovian system in the sense that x is generated by the uh, stochastic equation we have here, and the mu measure will be propagated by the fokker planck kolmogorov equation. So that's our dynamical setup, and we then can summarize all this with the uh, <coughs> with the uh, Fokker-Planck dynamical, uh, uh, sorry, with the McKean-Vlasov dynamical 
uh, equation at the top for the generic agent, uh, initial condition given by the law of x0, and uh, analogously, the, uh, that the, <clears throat> that the uh, population, before we take infimizations and do control, assuming limits exist, the, the uh, uh, cost of go incurred for the uh, generic agent using the control U would be given by the expectation of the uh, integral up to T of L, where L has got the same formal definition as F. Right, so that's the basic MFG setup, a controlled uh, mckeen vlasov dynamics and the mckeen vlasov performance function for a generic agent. Okay, now, uh, so uh, the, that if we assume that for any controller U for a generic agent that indeed these limits exist uh, for the dynamics and the performance function, and if we assume there exists an infinite population Nash equilibrium, then the generic agent best response will be generated by a, a, a hamilton jacobi bellman equation, as portrayed here, and the corresponding generic agent state distribution will be propagated by the uh, mckeen vlasov fokker planck komogorov equation, where here we've also called this a, a, a mckeen vlasov uh, hamilton jacobi equation. So, and this gives us the uh, this gives us the mean field game equilibrium uh, when the uh, measure mu exists uh, and the control closes the loop through these uh, linked uh, partial differential equations. The, uh, the uh, again, as we are all familiar with the fact that the uh, power of mean field game theory it is that it turns a potentially extremely complicated game theoretic problem into a problem of stochastic optimal control of one agent against the mass, and, uh, period. And so we've turned, it turns a uh, com potentially intractable uh, uh, game th theoretic problem into a uh, into a stochastic control problem, and and indeed just one problem if there is only one type of agent. But of course, this generalizes to uh, families of agents. So, the uh, do these uh, limits exist? Uh, then the uh, basic theorem is that subject to technical conditions, um, which can be presented in uh, basically two. Uh, principal ways, then the uh, uh, the mean field game equations have a unique solution with the best response control generating a unique Nash equilibrium. And of course, the key feature of the best response control is that uh, for the uh, a generic agent I, this depends only on time and the generic agent state that it is observing, and the uh, non-random quantity mu t is uh, generated as a solution to the mean field game equations. Furthermore, we have the epsilon Nash property, uh, which is uh, as expressed here, which is that uh, when all for a finite population, when all of the agents except one uh, are arbitrarily chosen, I. Um, is uh, the population is using the mean field game solution, then it, it can be of no more than epsilon, uh, no more than an epsilon improvement can be gained by unilateral behavior, where that epsilon uh, will go to zero as the population goes to infinity, in the sense that for every epsilon, there will exist a population size such that all greater populations will uh, result in this uh, uh, set of inequalities holding. So, and it's this, uh, uh, the epsilon Nash property, which is, makes, uh, justifies the application of mean field game theory to finite population problems. So, uh, now, so now let's go over to um, mean field game theory and transfer this to the graph on setting. So the basic hypothesis, um, 
basic hypotheses that we're going to uh, adopt will be uh, <clears throat> the modeling framework is that at every node in the uh, uh, in the at every node in the asymptotically infinite network system sequence which will denote gn there is an asymptotically infinite population of symmetric agents that locally are interacting uh, as in classical MFG. However, the, uh, the local average dynamics and costs are then further averaged globally over all the network nodes, uh, where the averaging weights are given by the, uh, uh, given by the uh, weightings of the network GN, and asymptotically, there'll be a limit uh, typo here. Asymptotically, we're assuming the existence of a limit graphon, which we assume to be unique. Right. Now, the, uh, so uh, the mean field game equations then generalize in a very straightforward way to take in this situation. So notice here that the display uh, of the uh, graphon mean field game equations is essentially are uh, essentially identical or apparently identical to the mean field game uh, PDE pair, except the dynamics here are denoted F tilde and the cost, uh, uh, cost rate function L tilde, uh, uh, and the measure is being replaced by the family of measures mu G. So we go, what we'll see is we go from one mean field, as in standard MFG theory, to a um, uncountable family of mean fields, where these are associated with the uncountable number of nodes in the limit graphon. So, so the this uh, set of equations is has must, is to be taken with the descriptions of the F tilde function, which is given down here. This is just local dynamics. So, if you just uh, neglect F zero, then we then this is the F tilde. Then you will see that what we have. For the inner integral, we have our familiar uh, mckeen vlasov averaging, where the argument xb is, aver is uh, uh, it, where there's going to be an, uh, an averaging of f x alpha u alpha xb with respect to the mean field measure mu beta dx beta. However, that is at the beta node. And then the influence of this uh, mean field weighted dynamics, uh, the weighting uh, uh, that you get from the mean field will be the intensity of the link G alpha beta. So, uh, so then um, for each beta, we'll compute this local mean field weighting. And then we get the intensity of all of this at the alpha node by integrating against G alpha beta. Okay? So, uh, and similarly for, for to get L tilde from, from uh, the familiar weightings of the L function. So the, so the complete uh, graph on mean field game equations is are simply, because it is it fits like a glove, if I may use that term, is simply to expand the dynamics and the costs of classical MFG equations with their graphon uh, expansions. So, uh, so then you see, um, uh, and it's worth remarking at this point, before we go on to the uh, specific results, that we retrieve standard MFG theory just simply by flattening the graphon. So you see, if we do have um, a, a uniform connections between all the nodes of the same intensity, instead of having, um, as in our uniform attachment iconic picture here, uh, we will just uh, have a value one across the whole uh, graphon, and then there'll be a solution which will give, there'll be a unique solution which will give us simply uh, at each node, we'll simply have a copy of the solution to the classical uh, uh, MFG equations. So the identity of the nodes will vanish, uh, and we just fall back to the standard case. Right, so what we uh, actually uh, are able to establish uh, this is the, these the, now the results are specifically specifically with Minyi Huang um, is that if we uh, appropriately expand 
the hypotheses of existence and uniqueness which are used in the MFG case. Then we get existence and uniqueness of solutions to the GMFG equations, and we get the epsilon Nash result. So uh, um, that uh, the that um, uh, that there are the uh, uh, we have this family of of uh, remember now that we're dealing with an uncountable family of mean fields, um, one for each node, and then there's. Uh, a, a technical assumption on the Lebesgue measurability um, that uh, of the uh, of the these integrals um, uh, when we're so often we are integrating out certain certain uh, factors. So this is for the the mean field at the beta curve at the at the beta node. Um, the, that uh, uh, we have a a, a uh, sensitivity of the uh, evolution rate of change control for the for the mean fields at every beta node. Um, uh, the um, so that uh, what we need to do now, because we have this indexed families of mean fields, is that we have to have a, a, a integrability with respect to d beta um, of these uh, of these uh, local uh, average mean fields. Um, the, and uh, we have a control of the drift term for the HJB. Uh, that the note, the point to note here um, is the extension to families of mean fields, families of mean fields, because they're indexed by beta. Uh, and so these are direct generalizations of the hypotheses in the uh, in the standard case, so then we have that uh, U is uh, the control system can be compact. Then for the formulation uh, for the uh, existence and uniqueness, uh, the hypothesis for existence and uniqueness theorem, then um, that we take uh, the the uh, that we take the uh, um, drift and the cost rate functions to be continuous and bounded. Uh, uh, in x and in in uh, x and y, um, so we'll skip the f zero and, and l zero for simplicity. Um, and first and second derivatives uh, with respect to x are uniformly continuous and bounded, um, and that we require a Lipschitz continuity uh, of the of the drift function. So these are our standard. Uh, hypotheses for the ex for existence and uniqueness in the nonlinear uh, uh, nonlinear general MFG equations, and then uh, the important hypothesis, uh, which is that the minimization of the Hamiltonian gives rise to uh, gives rise to a uh, um, argmin function. Which is going to be uh, uh, unique, uh, 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 so there'll be a singleton. And uh, that the uh, as a function of its arguments be Lipschitz continuous uh, in both uniformly uniformly with respect to mu g and alpha. So you see, there's a real hypothesis here because mu g is a family uh, a family of um, uh, mean fields, and actually that hypothesis is essentially repeated here um, with the uh, on, on, that we'll um, be taking. Um, uh, so it's it's that the CTX depends continuously on alpha, um, and this would be uh, uh, that the X will stand for the state of the alpha agent. So the um, so that this uh, continuity of dependence on alpha is is uh, is a uh, significant hypothesis which we require for our existence and uniqueness. Um, so uh, here for H six. There's the uh, for any bounded measurable function h beta. Then when we integrate against the uh, the the graphon weighting, the g alpha beta uh, graphon weighting, we get a continuous function in alpha. Um, so Peter, you have ten minutes. Left. Ten minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, super. Um, now the, the, um, then there's a question of the convergence of the graph sequence. So um, the the uh, weakest assumption that we can get so far is that when now MK is the number of nodes, is the uh, number of nodes in the kth graph. As K goes to infinity, M, uh, uh, the number of nodes goes to infinity. Uh, the, as the index goes to infinity, the number of nodes will go to infinity. It's uh, so 
we, we uh, give ourselves the reasonable gen uh, generality in the notation that the kth element uh, along the sequence uh, has got mk nodes. And so this is a normalization of the intensity of the connection of the ith and jth cluster on the finite on the finite graph with uh, mk nodes. Now, when we uh, when we use the uh, solution of the graph on mean field game equations, we want to apply it to the finite graph. Question is, how do we do that? Well, we look at the uh, we look at uh, oh, if we've got n nodes or mk nodes, then we'll be taking uh, mk divisions, and then we then we'll take the control, which is given by the value of the uh, infinite population, infinite no, infinite population, the infinite graph equation at the midpoint of the interval uh, that uh, that comes up for the uh, for the uh, when we use the MK nodes, uh, MK divisions. So when we add this lot up and let the number uh, and run along the uh, sequence of graphs, then we uh, are requesting that the limit here is zero. This is kind of a variance. This is almost like an L1 variance control on the, uh, it gives us a form of uniformity um, for the, the convergence of the uh, finite graphs to the graph on limit. Now, um, so then what do we get? With uh, subject conditions H1 to H5, that was on the first slide here. Uh, uh, so subject to H1 to H5, um, what we get is the uh, existence and uniqueness of solutions to the uh, GMFG equations, and we generate a Nash equilibrium. And if we add uh, hypotheses uh, six to nine, where we recall that seven really uh, is a, uh, uh, restates uh, uh, the, the, the uh, hypothesis five, um, then uh, we get our uh, epsilon Nash uh, property where, uh, so when the condition theorem of one holds together with H6 to H9, taking the midpoint rule to generate the finite graph, finite population control laws from the GMFG solutions, then we have the uh, GMFG epsilon Nash result that for every epsilon, there will exist a k epsilon, so running along the sequence of graphs, and a population size, so there are always double limits here, such that the uh, epsilon Nash relation holds. Okay, now let's just see in the, that, so in the remaining time, I want to indicate what this looks like in the standard, in the standard uh, uh, LQG situation, but for the LQG GMFG setup, if we have a linear system, see all this looks familiar from LQG MFG, okay, except that, except that um, if we assume, which we haven't verified yet, that the hypotheses would hold for the convergence along the uniform attachment sequence, then what we get is the uh, familiar LQG uh, mean field game equations, but reparameterized up so that there is one set for each node alpha, and the mean field, this is the key point, the mean field at alpha depends upon the alpha weighting of the, so this is gonna be uh, mean fields of the, the, the mean of the states at the other nodes, but you see there's this double nested, there's this double integration. We average at each node, then we average the node mean, beta node mean, by its connection to the alpha node. So we have a Riccati equation for, uh, uh, so then in computing the optimal control, the Riccati equation, we have the offset uh, S alpha, and the S alpha though will be driven by the mean field as seen at the alpha node. And the mean field at the alpha node will be given by, as we've just uh, described, by the, by the um, uh, uh, by the mean of the mean field, let's uh, be precise, the mean of the mean field at the alpha node, and this will be given by the formula here. You take the, take the mean value at the beta node, and then you weight by the graphon. And the, scene, and the GMFG scheme closes with a local mean state process of X alpha. Okay, so now um, the, what I'll close with um, is the uh, work of... Uh, 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 of uh, Rinel Fogan uh, Chundum, 
who is a P, P, uh, PDF in uh, my group, and uh, he's uh, been the architect of the extension of the uh, GMFG equations into the uh, into the master the, the derivation of the master equation for what we're calling the LQ GMFG problem. So in the LQ GMFG problem, there's no driving noise, uh, as um, in the illustration I uh, gave just now, but the initial conditions are random. So then we have the same uh, cost functions, completely the, the same setup, and then by passing, uh, uh, following, uh, following uh, 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 Francois de la Rue um, in the uh, technique, uh, we have the, the solutions um, to the LQG GMFG equations um, exist if and only if, and unique if and only if there's solutions to the forward backward stochastic differential equation array here. Where well, here we have the forward equation, which is deterministic except for the initial condition, and the backward equation, which is deterministic except for the terminal equation. And of course, the backward equation generates here the adjoint process. And here is the control given in terms of the adjoint process. So then the second part is that if uh, there is a unique solution to the forward-backward STEs for the LQ GMFG, then there exists a unique master field given, uh, and there's just one master field, not a family of master fields, given by the function U alpha T X alpha, so this is at the alpha node, the alpha uh, um, adjoint variable, uh, the adjoint process is given by the U function here. Uh, and notice that the alpha parameterization comes in a function. We do not have an uncountable family, although we've got an uncountable family of mean fields, we do not have an uncountable family of, uh, of uh, master fields. And here is the equation, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the master equation for LQ a GMFG problem, and you'll recognize a partial differential respect to time, uh, uh, the gradient term with respect to u, with this coefficient here. Uh, so Peter, you have a two minutes. Two minutes, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so that's the that's the uh, master equation, and which is a subject of work right now to take it to the process case. And here is future directions of open problems, directed graphons, mass graphons, um, the uh, master equations I mentioned, estimation and methodology, uh, solvability of the graphon equations following the graphon control work um, pioneered by Shuang Gao, um, and uh, modeling uh, of uh, graphon modeling on complex networks, such for instance, given by the in the epidemiological problems, uh, epidemiological data, which is being analyzed by my PDF, Yaroslav Sali. Okay. That's the talk, which it consists of the extension of mean field game theory into the graphon mean field game theory setting with the GMFG equations. And this is set that sets mean field games onto uh, arbitrarily complex networks. Thank you very much for your attention.